1874, the reformist socialists, known as Lasallians, formed a purely electoral policy, uh, party excuse me, called the Social Demo Par Democratic Party of North America, figuring it was easier to appeal for votes than to build unions. They didn't do too well. And feeling the growing influence of the Marxists, they ca gradually came to accept the Marxist principles of the First International. In 1876, in the midst of this economic crisis, the Working Men's Party of the United States was formed. It was the first Marxist-influenced political party in the United States, and only the second in the world after the Social Democratic Party of Germany. Socialists from around the uh, U.S. gathered in Philadelphia at the founding Congress in an attempt to form a unified party. They were heavily influenced by the ideas of Karl Marx and Ferdinand LaSalle, the reformist socialists. The uh, party's trade union policies were heavily influenced by the First International, and at the assistance of the Marxists, the platform called for a delay in election activities until the party was strong enough to have some measurable influence. Uh, and by the way, there's another party out there that was also called the uh, Working Men's Party. It was based in California, and it's not to be confused with this group. The, they were anti-Chinese to the core, and their main slogan was the Chinese must go. So if, oh. don't get confused by the two. Um, in the middle of this economic crisis, there came a strike wave in 1877. It culminated in the Great Railroad Strike, which was practically a general strike that swept the country. It started less than a month after 10 Molly Maguires were hung, um, essentially for militant union activities in the coal fields of Pennsylvania. Um, over the next two years, 10 more Molly Maguires would be executed by the coal bosses. The Great Railroad Strike of 1877 occurred after many years or several years of bitter antagonism between the workers and the bosses. Furthermore, the mood of the country was dark because the election was decided by Congress and the candidate chosen, Rutherford B. Hayes, did not receive the most votes. God, it sounds like year 2000. Bush versus It's 120 years later. The strike was brutally suppressed. Over 60,000 state militia members were called out in addition to the federal troops. In Chicago, the federal troops having recently returned from an Indian massacre out west, killed 30 people and injured another 100. Altogether, over 100 people were killed around the country. Um, and it was a, basically a general strike. Most states uh, in the Union at the time on the East Coast were in near insurrection. While the Marxists won the platform battle at the founding convention in uh, 1876, the Thessalians ended up controlling the National Executive Committee. And after the crushing of this uh, strike wave in 1877, they uh, pretty much rejected the Marxist approach to trade union activities and decided to concentrate completely on the ballot box. Um, so in 1877, the uh, party got together again and uh, they did take advantage, they started getting more votes at the polls for obvious reasons. It's an economic crisis and uh, people are t workers are turning to somebody that will uh, make their conditions better. But they, the party then officially redirected everything toward the ballot box. Um, the small socialist movement at that time ended up breaking into three groupings or three camps. There were those that supported the purely electoral approach of the Socialist Labor Party. Another grouping felt that trade union work for immediate economic gains was the only correct socialist activity, while a third grouping felt that trade union work was insufficient and urged direct action. Calling for the propaganda of the deed, this current grew in size, attracting the most militant workers. Um, in the early 1880s, the German revolutionaries fleeing the anti-socialist exception laws arrived in the U.S and swelled the ranks of the anarchist as well as the socialist movement. The Social Revolutionary and Anarchist Clubs sprang up in various cities during this time. And in 1883, many of these clubs joined together in a loosely coordinated group called the International Working People's Association. Um, and they, they gathered in Pittsburgh at their founding Congress. The manifesto of the Congress called for the destruction 
of the existing class rule by all means. In other, for example, by energetic, relentless, revolutionary, and international action. Significantly, it also called for equal rights for all without distinction to sex or race. Section after section of the Socialist Labor Party left to join the more militant association. Within two years, that is by 1885, the membership in the SLP had dropped to only 1,500, while the International Working People's Association grew to 7,000. In response, the SLP leadership made some concessions to the Mar its own Marxist members. At its December 1883 convention, just two months after the Pittsburgh Congress of the IWPA, the SL, uh, SLP declared that electoral politics wasn't the only means of propaganda and agitation for socialism, and conceit was, excuse me, they said that was only a means of propaganda and agitation, and conceded that the capitalist class would only surrender their privileges by force. So what we see is that working class is starting to learn some listen, lessons from history. And uh, this is crucial. Though. As the decades go on, we're going to learn more and more lessons. Um, another trade union was formed uh, in um, uh, early 1880s, excuse me. It was called the Federation of Organized Trades and Labor Unions of the United States and Canada. Um, they eventually became the AFL. Uh, significantly, they set the date of May 1st, 1886, as a day in which the eight-hour day would become the standard. Um, in March of 1886, the Knights of Labor launched a strike against the Union Pacific and Missouri Rail Pacific Railroads. It was known as the Great Southwest Railroad Strike of 1886. 200,000 workers laid down their tools. On March 3rd of that year, striking workers in Chicago met near the McCourt Harvesting Machine Company, where union molders had been locked out since February of that year. By the time the general strike in May came around, scabs at the McCormick plant were being protected by 400 police officers. Meanwhile, with May Day approaching, U.S. labor unions of all sorts prepared for a general strike in support of the eight-hour day. On May 1st, numerous rallies were held all across the U.S. demanding the eight-hour day for all working people. A general strike also took place, with up to a half a million workers on strike across the U.S. The movement center was in Chicago, where 40,000 workers went on strike. Lucy and Albert uh, Parsons, leaders of the International Working People's Association, along with their children, led a march of at least 80,000 down Michigan Avenue in Chicago. Rallies continued for several days. On May 4th, a pipe bomb was thrown during the evening rally at Haymarket Square in Chicago. A policeman was killed and several were wounded. The police opened fire on the protesters, killing four workers and wounding an unknown number of workers since many were afraid to seek medical attention, fearing arrest. One source reports that 200 people were badly injured. Three police were killed and about 60 officers were wounded by their own bullets. A police re commander reported later that he gave the order to cease firing, fearing that some of our men in the darkness of night might fire into each other. That's collateral damage. Um, and the right people got hit. Um, the incident now is now, uh, is now known as the Haymarket Affair. Eight working class leaders, all members of the IWPA, were arrested and charged with the police officer's murder. Um, they were August Spees, Albert Parsons, Adolph Fisher, George Engel, Louise Ling, Michael Schwab, Samuel Fielden, and Oscar Nebe. Um, five of them were immigrants, and they were all convicted despite an incredible lack of evidence. Seven received the death sentence, and one received 15 years. The sentencing sparked outrage from the growing labor and workers' movement, resulting in worldwide protests. The defendants became international political celebrities and heroes within the movement. 